Section 1.13 triple products. There's two triple products that are interesting. Uh, one is a scalar triple product. Um, so named because it yields a scalar. And as you might imagine, it ends with a dot product. And on the inside is the cross product. The interesting property about this one is you can rotate the vectors through as long as you preserve the order and they're all equal. Uh, a vector cross B vector. And if you want to find what the value is, uh, it's really easy. You just take the determinant of this. Why does this work? Well, the cross product is i, j, k with b, x, b, y, b, z, and c, x, c, y, z, z. And you're going to take whatever that is dotted with the a vector. And so what's going to happen is that is the coefficients of the i term, the i hat term, is going to be multiplied by the ax. And the coefficients of the uh, j term is going to be multiplied by ay. And the coefficients of the z term are going to be multiplied by az. So it works out. It's great. The geometrical interpretation is uh, suppose you had three vectors, c vector cross b vector. And this is actually the area of that parallelogram. And then if we had an A vector to boot, then what we would get is the volume of the parallel pipette defined with a corner like that. So rather simple. The second triple product that's interesting is the triple cross product. And that follows the bat cab rule. So ba, uh, no, it's just B times the quantity a vector dot c vector minus c vector times the quantity uh, cab dot v vector. Uh, if you reverse the terms of this one, then obviously you're going to have a negative. Um, so you have to switch the two terms, the back cab terms. Uh, incidentally, um, using these two rules, all higher triple cross products can be derived. Um, the two that they list in the book that are interesting are a cross b dot c vector cross d vector and that turns out to be the same as a vector dot c vector uh, times b vector dot d vector minus a vector dot d vector b vector dot c vector and the other one they have like a, if you're crossing one after the other so you have a vector cross b vector cross c vector cross d vector and what happens there, is that too many parentheses? That is, oh, I'll just put one here, make it even. Um, so uh, it follows the back cab rule, except for that uh, C vector is actually C cross D. So you go ba, um, that's the volume, um, that's the scalar triple product right there, and then the other terms can be simplified. So you get a dot b vector uh, times c vector cross d vector. So using these rules, you can simplify uh, the number of the higher order cross, uh, triple cross products, triple cross products, whatever you want to do. Um, so those two pretty much cover everything you need to know for, for higher uh, product things.